Hello, dear friend, and welcome. I am extremely excited about this presentation just for you because I've been bragging that I can create a much simpler method for memorizing one acre equals 43,560 square feet. So the presentation is about complexity. 7-Eleven and a donut, if you haven't seen the previous video, is what's known, if you Google, the method for memorizing this simple number. One acre equals 43560. This is what comes out of the possibility. We have eight paths for the seven. To memorize 11, we have 12 paths. That's a combination of 20 plus the donut. 21 paths that might get us to remembering that number. 22 paths. Robert Fritz's first book, The Path of Least Resistance. We got 22. <laughs> so I don't think that's the path of least resistance. What is the point of this video is that it per pertains to yourself? That you will recognize, you will notice, that really understanding creating a method for creating and understanding a method for memorizing or vice versa is simple thinking because it's clear thinking. It's not complex thinking because of incorrect thinking. So that's the end of the day. I hope this resonates with you. The second part is going to be more of a contemplation meditation where we image and picture. So if you don't have time, coming up soon to just contemplate and picture and visualize. Pause and restart this video at a different time. I'm gonna see if I can put a banner with this video that lets people know, please don't jump in midstream. Please start from the beginning, which is complexity. For one number, one acre equals, this is what we need to remember, the complexity that is thought common and thought valuable and thought uh, proof worthy, proof worthy. It's a lot of work, a lot of paths, 22 paths. So that being said, for part two, I hope the simplistic, simple imaging that I'll be providing brings us to the path of least resistance for memorizing, creating a memory for that simple equation. So without further ado, I'm gonna remove the complexity I think maybe an eraser first. We'll leave it up to there. And we're going to have a little time for dry time. So I can probably hit it too. And just to give it, again, that nice clean slate when we're creating. We start with a blank page, usually a white page. We're using the blackboard. So we have time for that to dry as I begin to go into the vision and the image. In. I'll be closing my eyes. I encourage you to close your eyes too. And try not to determine or project or control, but just picture with me. So one acre equals. Where do we get where do we begin in creating and memorizing? We're given the one acre. We're given the one. So we start with the one. So for that one, one acre equals, we're going to start with an acre. And I'm going to share with you my acre. I think I heard in Arizona, the average is a quarter acre of land per family. We need to create a much stronger America that we go back to the old days every family should have one acre. I want my acre. Do you want your one acre? Everybody deserves one acre. So the acre that I grew up with as a child, Janesville, Wisconsin, when my father purchased the land for our new home, he said, well, that was reasonable. How much is that acre behind our home? I'll take it, said my father. So that acre where we as children grew up, myself, two brothers, two sisters. That acre of 
where we played football, where we played volleyball. And for volleyball, we had the lines drawn tight because we were very competitive. We are a very competitive family. So with the Kukla family and the playing the badminton and the volleyball and the baseball and the football, and behind us on that acre was a woods. Very tall, can you believe it? Choke cherry trees. Yes, <laughs> haven't seen them since. Down below, black raspberry bushes, um, a garden off to that northwest corner, very large, beautiful garden, mostly done, mostly created by my mother and father. And raspberry, we not call them bushes, but uh, strawberries and carrots and um, boy, all the different things from that garden on our one acre. And off to the left, we had to the south a dead end. So from our one acre, we never had the issue of traffic or cars or being hurt or injured while we played on our one acre. So to the other side, to the north, was another, at that time, vacant lot and a mulberry tree, mulberry bush actually, not too far from our home, where often we would pick these huge, large mulberries and bring them home, mulberry pies, mulberry jams. I think my dad made mulberry wine from this one acre. The one acre I best remember because of the rich black dirt in Wisconsin from, what was it, the, um, when it pushed all of the uh, black dirt, I guess, through the Midwest. So what I enjoyed the most about our one acre was our grass. The grass there was so green. I remember fighting with my brother when cutting the grass, who was pushing harder on the lawnmower <laughs> as we cut this beautiful, dark green, rich grass. And looking down now, I see that grass, those rich green blades, thick, sometimes so thick, very difficult to even cut. And I look down and I see my two feet planted firmly on this one acre. So on this one acre, I'm standing on this dark green, rich grass with my two feet planted firmly. And now, please open your eyes. The one acre, my two feet. Three, four, five, six. Oh, that's my one acre. That's now our one acre. So within the equation, two primary points come to mind as it pertains to memorizing and creating. Number one, can it get any simpler than that? If you can, email me. Russell at createk12change.org, Russell at createwhatmatters.com. Can you do better than that? Can you create a more rememberable matrix than that? I'm open to finding out. Did you notice when you first saw this number, did you notice this unique pattern? I did. I remember the first day at my real estate class when that number was on the blackboard, the whiteboard, and I said, bang, that's unique. But it took me a long time before I realized what I could create with that current reality. Because in memorizing and creating, one of the key points, along with the picturing, which we just did, is current reality. Current reality. We're memorizing a number, but now we know in creating and memorizing, always have a place to go as one of the principles. So, Russell, one acre equals how many square feet? Where do I go? One acre, one. Picture the acre, picture my two feet, look up, three, four, five, six, oh! That's my acre. Locked in, tight, don't have to rehearse it. Or do you? I don't think so. So this is 
I guess we can cap it off. The creative process as seen by the eye. So the imaging vision. Current reality. I noticed. Did you notice? I noticed. Very unique current reality. We now have the structural tension because we have the two points. Got the vision. Here's my acre. It's the one. Current reality. Right there. If those were rearranged, whole new equation. So within that structural tension, we'll just do the ST. Now have the animation. I didn't share too much animation with the vision. I could have told you about my brother and I really fighting with that lawnmower. Who's not pushing hard enough? <laughs> uh, yeah, I give anything to go back to those days, truthfully. So within the structural tension, we have always have a place to go. Always have place to go. Always have place to go. That's where we went. We got the points. We're working with that imaging, animated action. And within that is the A acre. Um, the A is perfecting, being able to picture and visualize. That's the inner eye. And the outer eye, noticing current reality, is that upside down A. So we're placing our focus outside of ourselves, out in here, working with the principles of memorizing and creating. Number one, the king of vision. Number two, the queen of matter, mater, mother, current reality. Now we have the two points. So they give birth to structural tension and always have a place to go. Lost well, my rubber band. They give birth to structural tension, always have a place to go. So now we need the rook of action, taking action, taking action. And then we have the pawn of proof. So are you now able to remember and share this matrix with those who struggle with simple thinking. Einstein has said it, Steve Jobs has said it, that thinking simply, simpler, <laughs> thinking simple is more difficult than thinking complex. But if we don't know where to go, thinking simple is always a test and trial and kind of floundering around. If we understand vision, current reality, structural tension, always have a place to go, action, pawn of proof. Seventh would be the, um, would be the um, return. I'm trying to think, um, oh, Peter Senge's book. The seventh, the seventh uh, discipline would be the, the feedback loop. Sorry about that. The feedback loop. So out of the principles, did we get where we wanted to go? Was the feedback 100%? Well, let's see. From the beginning, I shared with you that I've been bragging about the most simplest matrix for memorizing one acre equals. Peter Senge, wrapping around, the seventh. In numerology, the seven I hear turns its back on the eight or nine. So did we bring it in like we wanted to bring it in? Yeah, I think we did that. Which is supposed to lead to the nine for good fortune. There's the nine. So yes, for our children, for our teenagers, for adults, for senior citizens, learning one method for both memorizing and creating. And we begin to build the mastery. 
First, we got to learn it. Then we got to practice it. And we build that momentum. Upon a proof, that's where we're heading. In memorizing Mr. Harry Lorraine, super memory, super student, we can proof if we're able to remember. Solid proof. In creating, we can be fooling ourselves. No matter what we are doing, no matter what our momentum is, we can improve it with more of a conscious understanding and be, being able to proof the basic elements. We understand them, we put them in place. If there's other elements that are missing, please feel free to let me know. If there's any elements we can get rid of, please feel free to let me know. A work in progress. It's never done, but it needs to be refined and not complex. So if you are able to create a tighter method for memorizing, in the words of W. Edwards Deming, America and America's K-12 public edu education is in crisis. It's the simple thinking is where we need to go. So if you can create a tighter method for memorizing. I said method, right? I'm checking in with W. Edwards. So if you can create a tighter method for memorizing, please let me know. If uh, this doesn't make sense with you, then please let me know as well. Because this is where we need to go. Yes, to pick up my most favorite book by Mr. Robert Fritz, Your Life as Art, where he breaks down the creative process into three primary areas, the mechanics, the orientation, and the spirit of creating. That's what I'm referencing to Harry Lorraine, super memory, super student. What are the mechanics of memorizing? Once we understand those mechanics, our orientation, what is it that we really do need to memorize? Therefore, the spirit of learning can be there. We're missing that foundation. We're into the orientation, memorizing stuff we don't need or want to be memorizing. So the spirit is dead, for the most part. Tagline. If somehow you have super memory glue and you can naturally memorize and remember, you don't count unless you can teach a method to a child. If the child can't remember, there's a weak method there. It's not that they're a bad child, they're not trying hard enough, they don't care about education. It's that they don't understand the game, how the cards, how the chess pieces need to be played, and slow but sure, they're checking out. So please check in. Please participate. Does this make sense to you? If you have a tighter method for memorizing, one acre equals 43560, email to me, russell at createk12change.org, russell at createwhatmatters.com. If not, then yes. Please participate by picking up Super Memory Super Student. Your Life as Art by Robert Fritz. And please like, comment, and share with your friends this simple thinking, which I'm hoping is non-threatening. <laughs> I get threatened by complex thinking, man, when it's all over the place and I'm like, has this teacher really pinned this tight for me, the student? Or do I have to help this teacher to do that. Come on, man. Simplicity begins with two relative points. Please participate. Please share with your friends.